Over the last couple of months, I've been trying to up my miniature painting game by tackling some bigger, badder models from a whole whack of different ranges. While I'm seeing some improvement in certain areas, I gotta say, working on these giant miniatures day after day after day, I'm kinda getting bored. So to get myself out of this big model funk, I decided to play around with some power armor. Go right back to basics. They say variety is the spice of life, so we're really gonna season this set of power armor here by tackling a project that I've wanted to do for years, but just haven't had the guts to do. We're gonna paint this as a Nuka-Cola set of power armor. Now, first things first, disclaimer here, this is less of a tutorial and more of a let's just have some fun painting video. Yes, I'm gonna be going over some different techniques that you may or may not have seen here on the channel before, so you might learn a thing or two while we're having some fun. So grab yourself a Nuka-Cola and let's get to it. I've already gone through and done the pre-painting steps off camera, but I'll run you through quickly how I did that. Once you got the model built, you're going to want to prime it with just a cheap rattle can primer. At least that's what I like to do. Two rounds of dry brushing, first with a light to medium gray, and then do it again with your uh, bright to medium white. With the underpainting done, it's time to get busy with some contrast paints. For the base layer, I use Flesh Terrors Red by Citadel and work this into almost every nook and cranny of the model, leaving out the ribbed parts on the back of the legs, elbows, and the stomach. Now that we've got that nice candy apple red finish, why don't we go ahead and scuff it up? And for that, we're gonna use a little bit of sea sponge and varying colors of red, starting with Vampire Red by the Army Painter. Get a little bit of it on your sponge, dab off the excess, and then go to town. Even with just one layer of stippling, this thing's already starting to look a little bit more wastelandy. Bring out some of the highlights and adding some weathering. We're gonna keep going with another brighter red, this time using Intense Red by AK Interactive. And after a couple of rounds of stippling, you should be left with something that looks a little like this. You can see we've got a little bit of that texture, a little bit of that wasteland goodness built right into the model now, which will be great for us to do some highlights and those Nuka-Cola details. So let's get back to the brushes and let's get to it. To get started on the details, we're gonna go back to that uniform gray from the Army Painter that we used in our dry brushing step and start to highlight a lot of the accents of the model. The edges of the gauntlets, the pauldrons, the greaves, the tubes of the pelmets, there's all kinds of great spots that you can decide to pick out here for your Nuka-Cola flavor. With the gray sketched out, it's time to move on to some of the rubberized or less armory bits of the armor, starting off with a base layer of cultus robes, and then a glaze of my favorite Fallout-themed paint, Deathclaw Brown. Now we're starting to get somewhere with this model. It's got that Nuka-Cola sort of vibe to it, a bit of that weathering, really enjoying how this is coming together so far. Now it's time to really make this thing pop, going back again to that bright white and highlighting what we just painted in gray. I'm not gonna lie, this is the part that I was nervous about and the reason that I didn't tackle this project a long time ago when I really wanted to. That's the whole point of me painting this model and making this video to break out of the norm and to try something new because, hey, that's what hobbying is all about. Whether it's painting a single model or running an entire YouTube channel, sometimes you just gotta slow down, try something new, and take a risk regardless of how it turns out. Next, I move on to a silver metallic paint to get some of the details on the back of the model, like the access hatch, the vents, some of the tubes, as well as the gears and servos on the arms and legs. Moving back to stippling, we load up the sea sponge with a bit of that silver and once again start to stipple all over the model. With our new Coca-Cola armor looking sufficiently scuffed up from the wasteland now, it's time to add a little bit more grime. And for this we go in with a spot wash of null oil, hitting all of the big metallic areas, the under armor bits, the assault rifle, and a light wash over some of the white areas to show the buildup of 200 years worth of grime. And all that leaves is the Nuka-Cola logo. With such a small area to work with, there's no way I'm gonna write a legible Nuka-Cola logo on this thing. So instead I sketch out a general approximation of lines that look something like the word Nuka. A quick little flourish underneath to give it a little bit more flash. Throw this thing on a 3D printed base and give him a little bottle for the road. And I'm gonna call him done. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoy these type of painting videos, then you're in luck because starting on Wednesday, August 9th, we're going to be starting weekly painting streams here on the channel. If you've tuned into my painting streams before, it's a great time where we just hang out, work on a project, and talk about all things hobbying, pop culture, comic books, movies, you name it. It's a great time, so come on in and hang out. Hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on the notifications, and if you really like what we do, then make sure you head on over to Patreon or hit the join button here on YouTube. Your support 
support means we can make more videos more often for you to enjoy and keep the live stream train running. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned because WGNR will be back.